everyone, it's Delinka here and I'm here with another q and I haven't done this in a while and I ask you to ask me questions which I should answer. If you didn't know, I'm a software engineer, I study PhD in computer science, I've completed my bachelor's and master's in computer science and I'm also a content creator and here I'm answering your tech related and personal questions. So let's get into it. The first question is what kind of project you work on? I know this is still kind of a mystery because I don't share my code on social media because I'm not allowed to. And the reason for that is that I work in a cybersecurity company. I've always worked in cybersecurity companies. So my code is mostly invisible to you. And that's also because it's under an NDA and I just can't be showing you snippets of my code. And because I'm also studying a PhD and I also have activities for social media, I don't tend to do hobby projects where I show you my code. Another question is in my native language in Slovak, but I'm going to translate. Um, if I'm planning to stay at teaching at my university after I finish my PhD, a straight clear answer to this is no, I'm not planning to stay at university and I'm not planning to teach at university. It's simply because I just don't like these things and I was mostly forced into doing it. I have nothing against teaching in particular. I love to teach people. I love when people learn things from me. I love when people tell me they learn things. This is great, but when you have students which have a subject which they didn't even want to attend and they have to learn things they don't want to learn, then they are not overly motivated and it's all also not overly motivated motivating for you to be supervising a lab with people or with students who are just demotivated. And honestly, I totally understand them. I was not any different when I was studying, but it's just the way it is. It's not like people go to your course because they want to learn something from you. It's rather like they go to the course because they have to go to the course. Another thing is always commuting back and forth, which is also a lot of time for me since I don't live near the university. And there's a lot of paperwork and a lot of like you give assignments then you have to grade the assignments and it just takes so much time so because I want to be still developing I still want to be creating software I don't have as much time to spend on paperwork on teaching labs on commuting to university and on supervising students because I also have to supervise students and bachelors and masters what is your LinkedIn ID you just google my name and you're gonna find my LinkedIn it's super easy. What is your advice to a computer science student in his first year? I would say just don't lose your motivation, be ambitious and be curious. And I know what, that when you're learning, there is a lot of things you have to learn and you're frustrated, but really just try to think about why these things work the way they do and how they're put into real life and what they can give you. And just always ask questions about why you are learning this because everything you're learning or at least in my case everything almost everything I was learning was actually used in real life and also learning by doing like trying to do projects where you incorporate what you're learning is great. What do you think is your big achievement in your software engineering path? I think my biggest achievement is actually finding what I want to do because I had no idea when I went into software engineering I just didn't know what I would like to do. I was just literally lost. I knew that I liked C++ for example, but I could never see myself coding like low level kernel things. I knew I liked reverse engineering, but I also knew that I would never want to be looking at assembly for the whole life. I knew I didn't want to do web development. I knew I wanted to do apps, but then again, I knew that just doing apps wouldn't make me happy. So I always wanted to know I'm not like everything, but I always wanted to know a lot from different fields. And it was like, I could never find like my specific path on where I want to go. But my biggest achievement was that I actually found out that I want to be working with machine learning and cybersecurity, somehow helping cybersecurity field with machine learning techniques to get better results, to help experts and so on. From which country are you and what's your hobby? Uh, I'm from Slovakia. I was born in Slovakia. Then I moved to Austria with my parents and I lived there for more than 10 years. Then I moved back to Slovakia and now I moved back to Austria. 
Um, yeah, it's a bit complicated, but it is what it is. To be honest, my hobby is social media because it takes a lot of time to put content out there and especially if you're working as a software engineer and studying etc etc so it takes a lot of time so I have to say that taking photos videos and talking to you and these things this whole content creation is very interesting to me and I've always loved it um, and then it's traveling so also traveling taking pictures taking videos especially in nature I also like building Lego um, I'm also into keyboard modding lately and, and just the general things you know I like to be shopping I love to be watching movies and series and F1 especially so yeah I'm, I'm just normal I think best skill according to you I think the best skill you can have is the ability to adapt because this world is changing rapidly and we've seen it with AI when chat GPT and all these AI models with our, which are coming into our lives, which are ultimately making our lives easier. But we're also asking a question of if our job will be needed in the future and what we can do in order not to be let go. And I think it's the ability to adapt like AI comes and me, for example, as a software engineer, I have to think about how I can take AI and use it to my advantage to become more efficient in my work, to learn more and just ultimately become better. If I knew how to code before going to university, absolutely not. I didn't know how to code. So no worries there if you don't know how to code, but if you would still want to pursue a coding path, it's possible because I've done it, so you can do it too. Um, yeah, I was just very interested in um, computer science in general, especially in mobile apps and development of mobile apps. I was that person who always bought the newest flagship back then it was Samsung. So I always had the newest flagship. I was like saved money, bought the phone. Um, and then I sold the phone and bought another phone for the same amount of money because I wasn't buying like new phones, but I was buying uh, phones on like marketplaces where people bought it. They were new, they were unpacked, but they just got it for a better price. And I basically bought it for the same price I bought the previous model. So I wasn't really losing money there. And I always had the newest flagship. Uh, so I was always on the Google Play Store and I was always looking at the top charts of apps and I was looking at the apps and I was like, okay, one day I want to be able to build my own app. So this was kind of like my motivation into, into software engineering and that is ultimately why I went to study software engineering. But I didn't know how to code and I learned coding while I was studying. I actually failed a few subjects in the beginning. I'm not gonna lie to you because I had no idea what coding was about. Um, but ultimately I found my way. I learned coding and here I am. This is my cat Otis, by the way. He's a main Coon. Another question, are you German? No, I'm not German, but since I've been living in Austria for quite some time, I do know a bit of German. I mean, I'm not a native speaker, but I think that I'm, yeah, I'm pretty fluent. Another question is about my monthly salary. Um, I don't have any issues answering this question, um, but I want to tell you uh, why this is relevant for you because salaries are different in each country and the cost of living is different in each country. So it's also different for me. For example, I am working in Slovakia and my my pay is around 3000 euro so tax already charged. So this might be very little for some people in other countries because the cost of living is higher there, etc. But I would say that it's pretty decent for, for our country. So I'm not complaining and it lets me live a decent life and uh, pay my mortgage. So there's always space for improvement, but I have to say that I am pretty happy. Another question, what mistakes did you make as a student? I am an introvert and I don't like to ask questions. So I never ask questions. So whenever I didn't understand anything, I just, I was so afraid to ask questions because I was so afraid someone once said, someone would say that, you know, like I'm not worthy or my question was dumb or something. And that's just so stupid. Like whenever you don't understand something, just, just ask, like, what can you lose? Nothing. Things you wish you knew sooner while studying at university. I honestly, wished that I knew how to code. <laughs> it would make my life 
far easier but other than that I would say like I should have put in more effort into like really remembering what I was learning and like really working on my own projects even while studying and not focusing on grades so much because grades don't matter honestly like if I had an E or if I had an A like who cares and it doesn't really matter what matters is what knowledge you were able to get out of the subject and out of the project you were working on had to quickly take a break because I had to answer a call. How did you become passionate about programming? So I didn't like coding at first because I knew I was behind of other students who were already, you know, who already had some coding skills. Um, and as I said, I also failed a few subjects at the beginning. So I did have a more of a hate relationship with coding. But then a friend of mine actually helped me with the basics and understanding the basics. He was kind of like kind of like a mentor to me. So he really explained things to me and made it really fun for me so that I ultimately have fallen in love with coding. It's like a play area where you can keep rewriting things and keep getting better and making things more efficient or prettier all the time another question could you show us your lego collection if you're interested in seeing my lego collection that i would definitely want to do a separate video for it because my room my office is already so full of lego and honestly i already have to think about which sets to buy and which not to buy because i don't have any space for it do you get back pain from being at a desktop all day I do and the reason why is because I look like this like my posture is really bad so I honestly I try to work out more so that I have a stronger back and so that I don't look this weird I usually do look like a shrimp while working I don't know it's because of stress I think so like if you're when you're stressed like you shrug your shoulders and you know you form a shell so um, I think that's the reason why favorite Netflix show I don't really watch Netflix that much because I don't really like the shows there honestly like I watched a lot of them and I think the ones I liked at the beginning were The Witcher for example but that has gotten pretty crazy so I don't like it anymore um, I really 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 like The Night Agent so I'm really looking forward to the next season and I really like Manifest although it's a bit religious which I'm not really into but I don't know it just caught my attention and it was like I always wanted to watch the next and next and next part. Do you recommend learning Java for beginners? Honestly I really have like a I wouldn't say a love-hate relationship with Java I mostly have a hate relationship with Java. I would suggest you learn C sharp instead but I certainly wouldn't recommend learning Java to anyone. Java was my second language. My educational journey. I could do a separate video about my educational journey but I always studied at the same university and I studied uh, computer engineering for my bachelor's so I had a um, bit more networking and hardware and then I studied uh what was it intelligent software systems it was called i believe and that was in the field of computer science that was for my ma masters and now i'm studying applied informatics which is also in the field of computer science and that's for a doctor's degree your favorite drink while coding my favorite drink ultimately has to be coffee i really like drinking espressos and uh besides coffee i do like to drink red bulls but not a lot of them just occasionally and if you hear the sound in the background my cat just went to the automatic cat toilet so I really like the special editions of Red Bull where they have the winter edition and the spring edition etc etc they have a really really good spring edition now I actually have the bottle here it's this one it's wild berries and this is actually sugar-free but I am certainly no advocate for drinking Red Bulls only drink it when you know that you didn't already drink too much coffee before are all languages a little bit the same 
Well, yes, they have different syntax and things work a bit differently. If you learn one language, it is far easier to learn the next language because you're basically just learning a new syntax and how the language itself works, but you already know a lot from the previous language you learned. Okay, the last question I'm gonna answer today is if I work for Google or Microsoft, I don't work for any of these big corporations because when you're working for such big companies, you usually have like a very narrow scope and that's what I don't like I would like to work on multiple things I like when I have a bit of a bigger word and something what I'm doing so ultimately I like when my job is narrow but I can kind of move a little bit in the area and always work on something that makes me happy and that um, draws my attention so that's why I don't work for such big companies and I don't think I would like it I don't think this is something I want to achieve in life only to be able to like put Google or Microsoft next to my name I don't know like what does it ultimately give me you know it has to give you more than it takes from you so that's about it thank you for all your questions I was not able to get through all of them but me could make this a little bit more frequently and yeah thanks again for watching my video if you like it give it a like if you like my content subscribe to my channel if you think my content is valuable don't only subscribe but also tell your friends about my content yeah that would be great um uh, thanks again for watching and i hope to see you in my next video bye